Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy, and today joined with me is Lush. Hi, Hello. Lush. Hi, Lush. Hello. Hi, Crashy. Um, you know, we had a nice long talk about the great emu war. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he learned about that today. He didn't know that look was it a up. thing. If you're, if, you're not, yeah. if you're not from Australia, look it up. That's It's a thing. Uh, in any case, today we're going to do something else that's fun. We're going to talk about all of the things that Pokemon Unite does well, what they do right, what we love about the game. And mm -hmm. in general, we're going to be positive today. That's the, that's the goal. I'm not positive hiding it. Answer. I'm not I'm hiding it. Yeah. So, Lush. I'm for it. Mm -hmm. Dude, take it away. We have no structure of this. We talked about it. We just wanted to kind of get on yeah, here and like riff -rack. Wing it and say words. Yeah. So, like, honestly, my, my favorite thing that Pokemon does well, oh, my favorite thing <laughs> that Pokemon Unite does really well is, um, besides, like, the gameplay, of course, I like the way that it, like, incorporates the main series moves of Pokemon. As someone who's, like, a Pokemon fanatic, I really mm -hmm. love the way it incorporates, like, the main series moves. Like, when I, when I run around as, like, if I use, like, Volt Tackle of Pikachu, it's kind of cool. It feels like I'm a Volt Tackling Pikachu, right? If I use, like, um, extreme speed on the car, I feel feel like I have extreme speed. Like I, I just love it. I love the the vibes of the way they incorporate the kind of moods, you know. And I think they do it really well. And they're they're different from the main game. Like we, have, we have like six surfs, and they're all different. That's so cool. Yeah, I think it's so cool. Yeah. See, I don't I don't have the like Pokemon angle per se, but I, I come a lot from the MOBA angle. And the cool thing that I like is the customization of each character. Now, granted. There is a flip side of that coin where it's like it's hard to balance all the moves, right? Like, you know, the main build might be pup or e speed for any given patch, but mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really matter because there's play style variants. And sometimes both builds are really, really viable and you get the opportunity to like, oh, if they're playing this, I could play this into it. And, uh, you know, coming from other MOBAs, you know, you don't get a lot of that. You get the characters. Mm -hmm. They have three moves and an ultimate and that like that's the character. And then you build items to kind of specialize them out. So I think that like creating a MOBA in 2021, right, that they did, it's it's really hard to set yourself apart. And that's one thing that I think they've done really, really well from both the character design, but from like the design of the game and like what the goal of the game is. Yeah, yeah, like the game being like a scoring game, you know, such like a game being a scoring game instead of being like the traditional destroy towers with damage and then go kill thing at base that essentially every other MOBA is. Like they, yeah. they kind of redefined the MOBA genre in a weird way, which is really cool. Like it, it's, no one expected it the basketball mobile with Pokemon, <laughs> you know, right? yeah. no one was like, yeah, they have. Um, I mean, that's the hard thing, right? Like it's it's like if you're trying to do something, if you're trying to grow in something, whether it's like content creator or making a game or something, you have to do something different, right? People always say that you got to stand out from the pack. And um, the hardest part, I think, about making a game, like think about Battle Royales right now, like the hardest part about making a game is like, how are you different? What do you do differently? Like, I think to like, I, I hate to say it because it's kind of a game that didn't do so well, but I think about Blood Hunt in the Battle Royale genre and like Blood Hunt came out, you're climbing the walls, you have all these vampire powers and it was super, super unique. Unfortunately, I think the devs kind of fell behind on that project, but um, it's the same thing with Unite, right? Like they, they create this really unique MOBA in a couple of different ways from the design of the characters and how you actually choose out your builds from the goal of the game for it to be like a, yeah, you're still laning, but it's not traditional laning with like minions that run down the lane. It's, it's like farming and like contesting and scoring yeah. and then all the way down to, like I said, scoring where you're trying to win the game scoring. So, um, oh, and all the way up to the 10 minute timer, like, like n no other MOBA is a set time. Not that I know of anyways. Um, most of them are like until the base is destroyed, like you said. Yeah. So they really did niche out their own position in the MOBA world just by creating something unique that, that I think works really, really well. Yeah, no, I agree with that completely. Like they, they've just, it, it sets them apart from other games. Like, yeah, no other MOBA that I can think of. We could be wrong here. I mean, leave a comment if you know otherwise anyone else. Yeah. But yeah, no other MOBA that I've seen has a 10 minute time limit and he's, and he's and he's done based on score. You know, this is really cool. Like, this honestly opens up the genre. They could make, like, an NBA 2K MOBA if they really wanted to, you know, <laughs> with similar kinds of, of mechanics. NBA Jam the MOBA, who knows if that'll come out. But I, I think it's really cool. And another thing, like, touching back on just, like, you know, kind of, like, honoring the main series games, I do like how the the Unite moves, they're not real moves from the games, but, like, adaptations of moves. And it's almost like they're, like, anime versions of these moves, like, where they're, just like, overly done crazy, like, Pikachu's Unite move could have been called Thunder, just like it's a move, right? And then people yeah. would have just been like, yeah, that's Thunder. But it's such like an epic Thunder, you know? Like if that was used in the anime episode, you'd get so hyped for Pikachu. Like I'm a Pokemon nut if, if people can't tell. I love Pokemon. There's a Pikachu on that couch. It's all blurry. You can't see him, <laughs> but he's there. And yeah, I'm, I just... Yes, Pikachu. Pikachu is, is the original chunky boy Pikachu that um <laughs> you don't see around anymore, you know? And, and I miss it. I miss those Pikachus. 
Um, but yeah, like I love the way they do that. I love the way the moves feel. Like Aura Sphere is like Lucario's like signature move, but he doesn't mm-hmm. have it, but he has the Unite that's essentially Aura Sphere, you know, and that's just a really cool way to incorporate things. Um, Dragonite's Unite is almost like a Draco Media with Fly intertwined. It's just really cool. It's a really cool way to do it. Um, Titan Flames Unite is like Brave Bird meets Flame Charge together, but he has those as moves. So it's it's, it's just really cool as a Pokemon fan, man. The, the way that they, they pay to the games, like as a kid, even as like a, an, an adult, let's be real, right? I'm 31 years old. Five years ago, I was playing Smite and I was like, man, I wish I could do this with Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like they've given me a Pokemon MOBA and I can't like, I can't be sad about it. Can't be. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the design is like, and that, that's like, this leads into much more specifically about the characters and their moves, um, but not even from the Pokemon angle. Just when you look at a new character and their kit that comes out, like I'm never really disappointed. Like one move set might not be as good. You know, we played on PTS, we figure out which one's good. We played on live, we, we confirm if it's still the right move set or not. Um, but like you play a character that comes out in this game and it feels like a MOBA character. It feels um, like the kit has its purpose. It feels like you can look at Zorark and say, okay, what does this do different than Talon? You know, why would I pick this? Where do I want it to go? And so um, from like the design of the characters, um, both like literally from like the art team down to like the actual functionality, like the kits and stuff, I think is is really, really cool. It's 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 one thing about Unite. There's not really a character in the game that I can't have some level of fun with. Now, balance aside, that's always going to be iterative, but um, they definitely have designed really, really fun and like engaging characters to play. I hard agree. I hard agree. And, and that's amazing. Again, I know you bring up the main Pokemon games, but they have such a library to build on with that, which is so amazing. Like there are so many amazing characters that already exist for them to pull from so i feel like that that's really cool you know that's really cool like when new pokemon comes out to me it's a familiar face and i get so excited to see how its moves gonna work what are they gonna give it from what it learns like it, it's, it's really cool and i do like the way that they um that there are different power spikes for every character and not just in the form of like stats or in the form of an upgraded move but in the form of like they're just moves in general you know um it's it's been a little more streamlined now but you know those of us remember back in the day when snorlax had a level 10 unite move <laughs> right mm-hmm. remember when um most like, a lot of Pokemon did. Gardevoir Guardian, did. Um, Memoswine did. Um, Zero Aura did. Garchomp. Garchomp did. Yeah. God, wow. Garchomp did. I why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, and it's just yeah. it, it's crazy though. Even now, right? Some Pokemon are level four. Look at Azu. They brought Azu back by one level, and it changed everything. Yeah. He's you know. And this game has strong. the potential for that. That's what's so cool. They can keep doing this kind of stuff. They can. Blastoise right now, its biggest struggle is farming. If they pull Blastoise back by one level and everything, this Pokemon will dominate. Oh, it would <laughs> be it would, it would be dominate. nuts. So okay, what's yeah. I know I cool. know a direction that I kind of want to go in. Um what what is something else that you could throw out that you think that the game just does super, super well? Um I think that the I, I did mention the gameplay briefly, but the gameplay is just so incredibly fluid mm-hmm. and just clean and crisp. That's something that I would definitely say they do so well. Yeah, I think like I could I could definitely harp a little bit about performance at times, like with menus and things. Um, but when you have like a standard game, like you're just playing a game, it's say you're not lagging or anything like that. The game feels like a game, right? Like it's it just feels like a clean game. I could see the game being played on mouse and keyboard on PC if they ever went that direction. Don't think they will. Um, but in the hands of like a play like me coming from MOBAs, playing literally MOBAs for like 10 years, I remember thinking like Mm, you know controller like i don't know like is there going to be enough buttons what's it going to feel like and then getting your hands on the game it's like oh yeah it actually works pretty well there's some functionality that the game has that they've built in that i think has a little bit of room for improvement um but i also appreciate it like the a and b pressing like that's a really really pretty clean thing now i sometimes i still feel like it doesn't really work all the time or it gets a little weird where i wish that there was a full split and i don't mean to criticize but now i'm doing it um there's like i wish there was a full split where like if you press the a button it'll never hit wilds i wish it wasn't like a hybrid split um or i wish we could have the option to flip that on and off for yourself but even like the targeting wheel which i don't really use these days it's still good functionality that i hope we see a little bit more iteration on so they've definitely thought about a lot of stuff like that move panel sensitivity remember they upped that we have much faster yes. sensitivity like they have yes. clean controls uh, i think that the game plays really really well on a controller i don't play on mobile so i you know i've heard complaints about mobile controls but there's also you know you get the performance on the map keep hearing i can't it's, move my it's mouth. hard to move the camera like it's yeah it's really really hard to move the camera around on mobile while you play uh, i definitely think we kind of have that as an advantage but overall i'd say like the functionality of the game and the way that it feels when you're just playing it like you push everything else aside it's like what mm-hmm. does the game feel like in your hands it's like yeah it feels really good and, and i think that's something phenomenal too because 
I remember thinking like um back back years ago, my friends would say like, oh, I think like say League of Legends might come to console eventually. And in mm. my head, I was like, how would they make these like top down mobas work on controller? How would they actually make these play right? Because yeah. Smite's different; it's a third person game. We've got a million of those, right? But for a MOBA like this to, to be optimized to work on controller, there's still some bugs here and there, but they've done an amazing job and, and I didn't expect it to feel so clean, to feel so so good on a controller because let's be real, we all play MOBAs on mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, one of the big things that I wanted to touch on was Thea Skyrim specifically. I think yes. the iteration, like first of all, I think that Remote Stadium was good. Um, you could talk about balance of it, Zapdos, whatever. I think it looked good felt good to play on. I remember telling myself, you know, coming from, I, I have a unique perspective where I come from like League of Legends and other MOBAs, but I also come from Heroes of the Storm. So I always have that conversational topic where I can say, oh, should we have one map? Should we have multiple maps? I'm still on the fence about it. I'd be fine if every now and then they throw us one map and that's all we get. But I'd also be fine if like, let's say, you know, two years from now, we have three, four maps and we have like a map pool. I'd be fine with that. I think that that'd be super cool. Um, but that point aside, I think looking back at the iteration from Remote Stadium to Thea Sky Runes, I, I love what they did with uh, Thea Sky Runes. I think it looks better. It's designed better. I think the balance on it is better. Dude, have, it's, you, it's, have you looked at Remote Stadium recently? It's kind of like, have you, bland to me, looking yeah, back at it. Yeah, it's like, where's all the detail? <laughs> yeah, it's... Well, I remember when we started getting leaks for Thea Sky Runes, and I was like, yo, like... There's this big yeah. like temple looking thing and like all the walls look crazy and it just it, it remote stadium felt like a hey you're in this arena you know and mm -hmm. Thea Skyrunes feels like you're in this place you know what I mean you're yes. you you have to defeat Rayquaza like and and I don't I don't even understand I'll be honest I don't understand the connection between Thea Skyrunes I don't know what that means or where that is or Rayquaza I don't get any of that but it feels like the immersion is more there. Like I feel like I'm in this this place that we have to fight over, and like it just feels a lot more cool. Yeah, no, it definitely does. It definitely does. The details are amazing. Even like the the design of the map from a competitive standpoint is way better. Having multiple angles to come in into the Rikuaza pit, like having the the two chokes on each side and the top and the bottom, and not just that that stale hallway that we had to deal with every yeah. game. You know, when there's in game huge, fights, such having, a huge change. Yeah, and the map, like, it feels bigger. I'm not even sure if it is, but it feels bigger. I, like, it, it has it, to be, dude. It's so it much bigger. It feels bigger. Yeah. And, and the jungle design is way cooler. Um, The camps feel, you know, better. Like, they're not hard to beat, but they feel better, yeah. you know? And, and the design looks cooler. It's You have to be more careful as jungle now because you can invade it easier because they're closer up, so teams have to, like, plan for that. Like, competitively, this map is just so much better. And uh, let's, let's just be real. Reggie Alecki is everything Rotom ever wanted to be. Yes, Robert Thomas. And it's, it's hard to say that about Robert Thomas. It's hard to, but look, he, <laughs> Robert, listen, Lush. He paved the way for Reginald. Robert walked. So Reginald <laughs> could run, you know? Yes. yes. And um, <laughs> it's very true. Drop a like on the and, video and, for, for Robert Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. For F's in the chat for Robert Thomas, guys. Um, <laughs> so I, I will say this as well. I don't think anyone is sad that Dreadnought's gone, right? It was just such a swing objective. It was so, like, and don't get me wrong, like Reggie Alecki is is a swing objective too. It can be, especially in solo queue. But like, dude, the I I wish we had like data to see the win percentage of first dreadnought. It's it had to have been massive. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was just a it was a really like snowbally objective. Even post nerf too. Yeah, I mean, if we think back, like if we think back to how we played that map, right? It was a lot of the time, like it not like competitive aside, like if we look at like our actual rank games. If the enemy team got first dreadnought, we farmed until two minutes to yeah. flip the boat. Yeah, you just that was you just we avoid them. <laughs> you either avoid them and hard farm, or you like run your face in them and hope you get like one kill so you can get some catch up. XP. Yeah, so and yeah, it was it, it was steep. It wasn't as active. We weren't really doing stuff, and they've really like the amount that Thea Sky ones improved the game is actually like a lot bigger than a lot of people do realize. Like we're playing the whole ten minutes now. We were only playing like two minutes before, and we were complaining, "Oh, just rip bird win." I, I will say with the, with the health change right cause, it feels a little flippy again, but. Definitely not to the extent not that as, it was. This yeah, it'll never, it. it'll never be what Zapdos was. And that's, you know, yeah. for better or worse in, in some perspectives. Um, I, I want to... Uh, like the, the shielding. So yeah. like requires like a stat line. They can change it whenever they want. They can they can up requires health. They can change the, the shielding amount. Like it, it's Yeah, so we've talked to, about this before. It's, that it's, yeah, I feel balance. like this is easier to balance around, which is mm -hmm. great. And it's also... I mean, Rayquaza is what Zapdos like should have been. It's just better. It's just a better objective. Um, I yeah. want to kind of pull away from gameplay a little bit and talk about 
uh, what, what is the game like how what is the game doing for players that's good and there's a couple of things I want to specifically touch on one is a bit of a double-edged sword I gotta be honest uh, but I'll bring it up it's the game I think is incredibly approachable for new players um, and in some ways it's not and I, I'm only going to criticize a little bit because I, I feel like someone will drop a comment if I don't I, I think like emblem systems and stuff like that is a little steep um, but if you look at like everything the game gives you how many free Pokemon the game gives you uh, the super enhancers like just the sheer amount of like dailies and weeklies and events like the game is is dude we've been talking about it for a long time it's pretty free to play friendly and um, mm -hmm. you know even though there are some practices that are going on that I don't care for I can't take away from what they do well and i definitely wanted to touch on that like you can make an account in this game and go really far like you can you can do just fine and earn things and unlock a bunch of pokemon and really get your foot in the door as a as like a newer slash free-to-play player 100 percent. if you if you start this game like if you start this game and you just like don't really know what's going on and you want to get some items going if you just used your three like item like your super enhancers if you use them on say like muscle band focus band and like a body barrier it wouldn't be a great build or an optimal build but you could play and test every character yeah you could play them pretty well at a pretty decent level right and that's what's really cool about the game like it's very accessible to newer players and you start to min max more once you get into it um i i have free to play accounts that i have items like all the items level 20 fairly easily it's definitely accessible it's definitely something you can do it, it never felt like it was a pay to win with items um emblems um, I pay to win system either, but the RNG of them is quite frustrating. Yeah, it's quite be. frustrating. I still don't have Kabuto. <laughs> I, I, I finally got Kabutops and it was uh yeah. it was a long road. Uh, I will say I know Spraggles had done he did he posted it on Twitter, but I think he posted it on YouTube as well. It's like a two minute video and he was like showing like how with his road to masters on the like the, the brand new free to play account, um, he was showing how like how much he had actually unlocked. And it's like, dude, when you when you look back at it, it's a staggering amount. And then they're like I can't even remember them how many are. You get slow bro, you get Greninja, you get Nine Tails, you get Zero Aura, like you get you get it's like Cinderace. you get Cinderace, you get Cinderace. Like, Oh. Venusaur. I mean, yeah, there's so many Pokemon that they give you for free. And and if you missed the events for like say Mew or Hoopa and stuff, like yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. But I, you can't take away from the fact that they they have given out quite a bit, and I think that they've done a really good job with that. Yeah. Um, but also get the Crustle event, right? You get the Crustle event, and that gives you what Muscle Band, Assault Vest, XP Share. Um, yeah. You get a bunch of things out of that. You know, you get so much stuff for free in this game. Yeah. So there was one more thing, and now I'm drawing a blank. There was like one more thing specifically I wanted to bring up. Do you have anything off the top of your head? And now I'm just, I'm trying to think of what the thing you were I thinking know. was. I <laughs> know. Now it's, I'm drawing a blank. It's something, it's like, something not thing? in game. And I was going to talk about what they do really well. Dang. I mean, <laughs> there are a lot. I mean, like I said, there are like a, a lot of things that I think the game does well. Um, I they, I mean, I, I already kind of touched on it. And, and again, you can talk about like hollowware prices and stuff, but I think the art team on this game does a pretty fantastic job. Now, not oh. every skin is a banger. Like, I think that like, I think selling the, the well, oh. the animations, I mean, the animations from, from just, if we're talking again, just talking about character design, the animations from the character's abilities to the way that they actually look in certain hollowwares and stuff, it always looks really, really good. I always think of, um, the, the blaster skin. I can't think of it. The, the water one, um, Demon Slayer one. yeah the demon slayer one i can't think of what it's called Dude, <laughs> yeah. that skin is amazing and some of the animations on some of these skins are super super cool yeah i think my one of my favorite skins is the age of slash um yes. cape like skin yes. like it's so i folded cool. and bought that one i did it's so cool like i can't not love that skin and then there's like lucario's halloween skin come on it's, it's an amazing skin it's an amazing yeah. skin um there's just there's some really cool ones man i obviously like capes i obviously am a fan of capes yeah well, cool. I, like I said, I'm drawing a blank and I can't think of anything else. But friends, y'all can feel free to drop us a comment in the comment section down below. What does the game do absolutely well? We can talk about criticisms. We did a little bit. Uh, I did a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I do think that I, I want to remind people that there's a lot of things to love about this game. There's a lot of things that I love about this game. And it's always important to give credit where credit is due. And, and I try to do my best to do that. So a little bit of what today was. So. Lucia, you have any final words, any last words on what the game does uh, well or anything you want to say to the people? I just want to say that, like, we, we all love this game. All of us that make content for this game. You know, we, we talk about it all the time. Crash and I talk about this game all the time. We play this game all the time. You know, we, we all love it. We all want nothing more than for this game to succeed. Me, because I love Pokemon and I've wanted Pokemon my entire life. I, I will I will die on the hill of this game. I will. <laughs> I, will I love Pokemon, you know, you know. So, um, but yeah, 
leave leave positive comments. Let's have a positive comment section. I want to jump in here and reply to some of them myself. You know, leave a bunch of positive comments. Tell us what you love about the game. I know I missed something. I have to because I can't remember what I was going to say, but also because we we intentionally went into this like, hey, let's just riff raff and see what we what we land on and um there's there's some awesome stuff about Pokemon Unite. It's a pretty it's a pretty unique game. It's definitely a game that I think everybody no matter what your stance on it is currently will say has crazy potential and um you know I, I don't know if I want to touch on this. I, like I was going to say really quickly is like even like competitive. Like I can't wait for competitive kick up because competitive has done so well. Maybe, you know, they, again, they could work on the format a little bit, but watching competitive is some of the best times that the game has. And so um, <laughs> dude, there, there's so much crazy shit. So friends, fun I've had. <laughs> thanks for watching. Make sure you're uh, drinking some water, telling someone you love them. You know, you guys know my outro, but yeah, I guess we'll be, 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 sure we do that. All right, we do that around here. All right, friends. We love them. Yeah, we'll see you on the next video.